Hi, currently I'm working on my own roguelike game based around bow and arrow combat. I've made some cool new changes I wanted to share with you in this death log. So let's start off with some fixes to the boss I began working on last time. Boss fights are some really important parts of a game to get right. If executed well, they will stay in the player's memory for a long time and will make the game much more engaging. For roguelike games that is less the case because you will fight against them very often. But especially then it is important to make them fun and not too unfair. After playing Dark Souls I have a better appreciation for boss fights and their impact on the player. I don't think I will be able to make Dark Souls level boss fights but I will focus on making them as best as I can. So the boss I made last time really needs some polishing and upgrading. First I gave the boss a new animation for his charge ability, so it's easier to tell when you should avoid him. And on top of that the charge is more aggressive and faster. This is way better already. Still it is pretty easy to avoid this ability by just circling around the boss. I needed some sort of short range ability which would make this playstyle more dangerous. I thought a shockwave ability would be great and would discourage the player from coming too close to the boss. Here I made a simple prototype of the shockwave itself. As you can see it's really not that great and also quite ugly. But the very basic concept works fine. It deals pretty high damage and so it's quite important to avoid. After some more coding and designing I ended up on this. It looks way better now. And I also gave the boss a quick and less powerful melee attack. It's really not that great and you have to be really close to trigger it. But for some reason I find this punch animation to be really cute. Now it's time to focus on the really important part of the gameplay. The bow combat. After reading some comments under the last video, I found that you guys had some awesome ideas for different arrow types. The only problem was that until this point the player could only shoot the same arrow type over and over. I needed some system which lets you switch arrows. But before coding anything I made the standard arrow get stuck in enemies and not pierce anymore. I wanted to start with a completely clean plate and a standard and non-interesting arrow. And the next step was to again add in a piercing arrow. But now it's blue. Amazing, I know. The reason for why I did this was that I made a basic arrow script which I could now overwrite with different behaviors for each arrow type I want to add. This piercing arrow inherits from the base arrow script which takes care of all the standard arrow behavior. The only problem was that this piercing arrow also pierces through walls which wasn't intended. But this actually makes for another great arrow type. Now the arrow doesn't clip through walls anymore and behaves as I wanted. The arrow still passes through the shield of the boss but I think this is actually fine and quite cool. And back to developing again. The whole point of this was to make the player be able to switch between different arrows. And this now works great and you can actually see which arrow is selected in this rectangle left of your health bar. These icons are only placeholders, but you can see where I'm going with this. The next arrow type which I really wanted to work on was an arrow which targets an enemy and follows it around. So basically an arrow requiring no aim at all. This doesn't sound too convincing, but I just wanted to try it out. After some more coding, this is the result. Yeah, I don't think I have to point out what's wrong here. I tried fixing it, but somehow I made it even worse. This is the exact opposite of what the arrow is supposed to do. It's now nearly impossible to hit anything with this. Great! After some frustrating hours of trying to find the issue, I nearly gave up. Turns out just completely ignoring the bug really helps. The whole mistake came from this missing minus sign. This is much more what you have in mind when thinking of an auto aiming arrow. It still behaves quite weird in some places and sometimes circles the target many times but this is just a matter of tweaking some values. You know what?
I sometimes feel a bit sad for these poor enemies which can't really defend themselves from the player. It would be fair if they had a way to shoot back at the player. It's finally time to add a new enemy type with a ranged attack. I started by making an orange rectangle spawn on the map. This enemy already should have more health than the others, so you need more shots to eliminate it. Then I gave it a way to shoot simple projectiles, which look quite underwhelming at this moment. To make this enemy less boring, I designed a simple body for it. I tried to make it look like an ant queen or something, and it now gently spits at you. Sadly, it is still very easy to dodge these projectiles. The enemy is just really awful at aiming. At first, I wanted to make the enemy predict where the player is going and shoot in that direction. But I figured it would be better if the projectiles follow the player slightly. That's what you see right here. I think the enemy turned out pretty interesting and fun to play against. Let me know what you think in the comments. The last thing I worked on were these objects you can activate. These obelisks are spread over the whole map and when activating them all, a boss spawns in the middle. But they needed something which would make them interesting and not just like a collection minigame. I made it so activating an obelisk spawns a bunch of enemies around it. You are forced to kill these enemies because the obelisk only completes and turns blue when the swarm of enemies is dead. This turned out pretty nicely, but there's one problem. When activating it, you get completely jumpscared by these enemies which just appear out of nowhere. I also have to say it looks quite dumb. So after creating a small particle effect, this is how it looks like now. The enemies now only spawn after a short amount of time, giving you enough time to react to them. And this animation lets you know where they will spawn. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and liking it. I wish you all a great day and see you soon.